This episode of Connecting the Art.tv on GabLocal.tv is brought to you by The Break Room, a metro eatery in downtown Topeka. Well, welcome to The Break Room here for Connecting the Art, and we've got a great show for you. We've got a nominee for an Artie Award. We've got Larry Peters right here with us. Larry, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Super days. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here, and congratulations on your nomination for uh, you. an Arts Connect Artie Award. Uh, okay, so let's get started with this. We want to find out all about you here. we got a little bit of time to find oh, out boy. a whole lot, right? <laughs> okay, so tell us about your involvement with Topeka's art scene. I'm trying to think back how far I've been, because I went to Washburn University starting about 1962, and I didn't turn an art major until after I was through first semester. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I've been involved in arts ever since, probably 63. And uh, no, I started in 56, sorry. I'm trying to do the math, but you're messing yeah, me up in my head here. it wasn't working, was it? It wasn't working. <laughs> well, you know, artists aren't good with numbers a lot yes, of right. times. That's right, don't, don't and, ask us to do that. But uh, I started in Fitzgerald. I graduated from Washburn in 62. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I went to graduate school at Southern Illinois Carbondale. <clears throat> and uh, graduated from there in 65 with a Master of Fine Arts. Mm -hmm. And part of the time I worked as a teaching assistant in the ceramic department. And then for a short while, I did a, a stint with the uh, SIU TV, uh, doing various types of artwork, cutting out letters out of wood and that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. So were you born here around this? Area? I was born in Manhattan, Kansas, okay. a little apple. Okay. And uh, it's still a town I like. I don't get over there all that often, but enough. Yeah. My so first remembrance are the zoo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. If you had to select only one person who shaped you the most into an artist, who would it be and how did they shape you? I think I'd have to give it credit to uh, Jack Wright, mm -hmm. who was uh, my ceramic instructor at Washburn University. Uh, I had more time under him. Uh, I don't do anything like what he does, but uh, I learned all the basics from him and then went from there. What's his medium? Pardon? What's his medium? He was a ceramic artist. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, excellent. And he was living up until just about a year ago. Mm. And mm. I used to stop by and see him every once in a while, too. Mm. Uh, we had a little bit more than a, just teacher-student. Uh, friendship. Yeah, it was friendship. It was a friendship. Good. Okay. What was, what was the, I have to know this, what was the eight-year-old version of you doing? An eight-year-old version? Yeah, what did you do when you, to fill your time? Oh, my gosh. I probably played Cowboys and Indians. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, that would have been back in the uh, 40, 1940s. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, it was World War II. You know, <laughs> that's what little boys did back then. Mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. I had nothing to do with the arts at all. Well, my mother had me take piano lessons and horn lessons, and also I tap dance for Dorothy Thomas. Uh, ah, excellent. You've heard of Absolutely, her, a, uh -huh. an institution around yeah. here. Absolutely. So you're, tap, you're going to do a tap dance for us now? I don't think so. I don't have the right shoes. <laughs> you can borrow, that a good you excuse? Can borrow Frank's. He no, I can borrow his. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what's your opinion of the state of Topeka's art scene? The state of the arts in Topeka are, I think, fantastic as compared to when I was a student. Mm -hmm. It's uh, kind of like seeing Washburn University campus now and looking back 40 years ago and seeing what it was like. Mm -hmm. uh, years ago, I want to say 30 years ago even, I probably knew all the artists that were in Topeka. I have no clue how many you know, there are that I don't know now. Mm -hmm. So are there any opportunities that you see that Topeka offers artists, whereas, say, a traditional community where artists flock to, uh, that we'd think of what they have? What kind of advantages do we have on top of them? If an artist is looking for a studio, uh, it might be a little difficult to find one here as compared to Chicago, Kansas City. Mm -hmm. However, what you're going to pay monthly for rent it's going to be 
way, way less mm -hmm. than uh, anywhere else mm -hmm. uh, more of a large city. flexibility on yeah. you know, what you can do with your money versus what it produces, right? right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And <clears throat> probably it's a toss-up as far as finding a day job mm -hmm. that you can do, while, particularly in school. Um, I had a day job, but only in the summer. Mm -hmm. I worked for the Kansas Historical Society uh, uh, archaeological field crew. Mm -hmm. And so whatever money I made during the summer, that's how many hours I could take the next winter. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, how about, how about this? Um, <clears throat> what would you want to say to the person who nominated you for an Artie Award? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Start off with what they say on Antiques Roadshow. Wow, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, it's really appreciated. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, kind of a surprise. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't spend my whole career as an artist, a good deal it has been. But of course, I was the uh, gallery director for the Alice Sabatini Gallery at the library. Absolutely. And a number of years, I was still, I was working there, but I didn't get nearly the body of work done while I was fully employed. Mm -hmm. I had to work on weekends, nights, uh, vacation, holidays, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Now I have my choice. I can go and, you know, work fresh, not be tired and go into a studio and work. Yeah, and you were the founding director of the Sabatini Gallery there, right? Weren't the first well, one? <clears throat> yes and no. Mm -hmm. There was a gallery there. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the first full-time gallery director. Okay. And <clears throat> Colette Banger actually, I think, probably uh, was doing the gallery work uh, as a part-time person uh, before I started. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a number of years as part-time, then working in the uh, fine arts uh, books department. Mm -hmm. And then finally it worked into full-time position then one time staff added, and now I think they're up to like four staff members. Yeah. <laughs> so technology has changed the way that we communicate, the way we do pretty much everything. Uh, how do you think it's affected the arts community? Okay, I'm looking at it as, I was speaking with my wife about this sort of thing today. The one and only Barbara Waterman Peters, of course. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Okay. And, some of us old people, we don't catch up with all the changes and we miss out on some things because we don't deal with that. Mm -hmm. And so it used to be you got a letter or you got a prospectus in the mail about a possible show to enter. Mm -hmm. And now it changed to emails. And now sometimes you don't even get an email. If you're not playing with Facebook, mm -hmm. you miss it. Yeah. My wife told me she saw this on the prospectus on uh, Facebook. And so uh, we went in and got it, and so I entered, and that's the two pieces I'm taking to Heston, Kansas, for mm -hmm. the Kansas Artist Craftsman mm -hmm. uh, shows. Uh, of course, there's a lot of people that uh, they're not really working with their hands other than the fingers mm -hmm. and uh, cameras and yeah. producing their art. Yeah. And... It's probably mostly old guys like me that want to keep their hands actually involved mm -hmm. in something, working with clay, yeah. metal, and even with a paintbrush. Yeah. Your hand directs what that brush is doing, yeah. not Photoshop or something. It's de definitely <laughs> different. Things have changed, huh? Uh, okay, so what do you have to say to the other folks who've been nominated for Artie Awards? I'm sorry. What do you, to the other folks who've been nominated, what do you have to say to them? Part of your class here. <clears throat> okay. Um, I can't remember right now off my head, off the top of my head, who the other nominees are, but most of them are some, been involved for quite some time mm -hmm. with the arts. And that's the way the board of the uh, arts Connect. The classy mug there, very nice. Looks at, that's one of the criteria is uh, that you have been involved in doing something and not just one item for one year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, what would and you congratulations like... to the others. That's too. a good one. That's yes. a good one right there. <laughs> uh, what would you like to see in five years for Topeka's art scene? Okay, Topeka has been toted as a uh, arts, great arts town. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good arts town. I wouldn't say it's a great arts sales town. I think the general public has to be educated more. And do you want to keep the arts around? Mm -hmm. In the past, uh, most of our big name artists, they haven't stayed here. Mm. They've gone on or they don't sell here at least. They have to find a dealer, a representative for them in some place like Chicago or Memphis or at least some town yeah. that has a larger metro area than Topeka does, even larger than maybe Kansas City. Mm -hmm. It's been tough there too. Uh, Barbara and I have had our best uh, representative over in Manhattan, however, Mm -hmm. uh, Strucker Nelson Gallery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And unfortunately, they're going to be going out of business. They're getting to the retirement age. And they want to slow yeah, down a little bit. Had a good run. And they had a very good run. Uh, they put nine pieces of ceramic sculpture plus two 2D pieces that are a little larger than what this table is mm -hmm. of mine in the uh, uh, Emprise Bank collection which is an extremely large collection of mostly Kansas artists hmm. down in Wichita. And they have some other satellite banks, too, or branch banks. Very nice, very nice. Okay, well, is there anything I didn't ask you that you think I should have? Where am I going next? <laughs> That's, I'm sure, somebody else would think. Uh, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. Things develop. You start on one project. And you'll do a series, or I do, a series. And little by little, even within that series, there'll be little changes that go on, particularly with um, not necessarily the basic form. Uh, I'm talking about ceramics mm -hmm. particularly now. Mm -hmm. And it would fit with my 2D work, too. And <clears throat> surface treatment may change. Colors may change. Mm -hmm. uh, the handle for a lid may change. Yeah. And uh, I've changed more rapidly, I think, working in the clay and, uh, than I do in the 2D. Because I've been working in 2D with some, one theme for roughly 15 years, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's all on a Holocaust. Mm. That's what the 2D pieces are on a the wall. They're mm -hmm. all on, on the Holocaust. Mm. Yeah. What brought you to that? You know, what, what, uh, I had for a long time deep... an interest in uh, World War II history. And so I started somehow reading uh, some statistical material. Other was just uh, narratives uh, by people that had survived the Holocaust. And reading something that that's powerful if you're an art visual artist, something's going to come out. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a comment to make. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I stuck with it. The works have changed visually a bit. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah. And my first works were not that large, fairly, you know, small. Now I'm up to something like that mm -hmm. size. Wow. Well, you've, you've just had very stunning stuff that you've put out, very yeah. incredible stuff, and well-deserved to be it's sitting here. It's not what you call popular. <laughs> yeah, well, but it, but it is definitely uh, relevant and stunning, and, and just you've, you've done a... I've had people job. ask me about a couple of works that are over in uh, my wife's studio in 831 North Kansas, mm -hmm. and they were you know, somewhat interested in what's going on. And <clears throat> as I explain what the work is about... I can see an expression change in their face that, okay, I'm not so interested in this now. Because <laughs> it's not a happy subject at yeah. all. And not one that most people want to dwell on. Yeah. Well, 
I'm glad you have. I'm glad you've done what you've done. Glad you've come here, and uh, congratulations Thank on, you. on the Artie Award nomination. I look forward to the party. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's the big thing. Everybody, <laughs> right. everybody gets to celebrate together there. Uh -huh. uh, don't, we can't let you go until we do the Notorious Lightning Round, though. Uh, that's where we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock, and I'm going to ask you some, some really quick personality questions, mm -hmm. and you just give me the very first thing that pops to the top of your mind, and we'll move through these really quickly. Okay. All right, ready? All right, we've got 60 seconds on the clock. And go. In your opinion, what was the greatest movie ever made? Greatest movie ever made. Uh, <clears throat> that's one I'm not sure about, but uh, uh, there's several movies that I would like. But I think the one that's really uh, had some power to me was uh, Judgment at Nuremberg. All right. Uh, what, which big name celebrity do you idolize the most? Oh, my God. <laughs> Not easy, huh? <laughs> no, that's not easy. Um, there are probably some that I could say the opposite direction, but... Uh, okay, as a kid, and it still holds true, I think, uh, Gary Cooper. All right. He's no longer around. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, if you had one superpower, what would it be? Uh... Be able to think quicker on my feet. Okay. <laughs> do you have, how about, do you have any tattoos? No, I don't have a single tattoo. All right. If you could take one. I don't one... like pain. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could take one personal item with you on a trip to Mars, what would it be? One person? One personal item. Oh, one personal item. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be one of my glass paperweights. Okay. And it's small. Easy to take around. Very good, very mm -hmm. good. And you could still kind of chuck it yeah. if you have to, right? If I had to. There you go, it's perfect. Uh -huh. uh, who are the top three people who make you laugh the most? Oh, Stephen Wright. Okay. I'm trying to think who the others are. I know, I've, I've thought a lot of him. Um, I know there's one lady, stand-up comedian, and I can't think of her name. I don't think I can come up with somebody that tops Stephen Wright, though. Well, the correct answer was Chris Schultz. So sorry you missed that one. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite kind of sandwich? Oh, okay. At the New York Deli or the uh, uh, Carnegie Deli in New York, uh, that was the uh, corned beef. All right. What's your favorite kind of music? Baroque. Classical. All right. And if you were an ice cream flavor, which flavor would you be and why? Uh, vanilla, because there's so many things that can go with it that are super, super mix. All right. And we'll try this one more time. Well, who's your favorite talk show host? Pop star, Bob Dylan. Oh, talk show host. Oh, talk show. Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, watch television that much, so... Uh, you're the only one I really know. And you Good have to answer. Be it. Good answer. Is that answer. the right answer? You got it. You got okay. it. It was right here. I had <laughs> yeah. it down. Well, that's Larry Peters. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, congratulations. Thank you for all the wonderful work you've done here uh, to make Topeka a great arts town. Good. You really do appreciate it. Cool. Keep and at it. Best of luck to you. Thanks.